Hi, my name is Raina, and this is Mental Health TV. This week I'm trying something new where I actually go in front of a camera and talk to you about the research that I've been doing. So let's get started. This week's video is about obsessive compulsive disorder, which is commonly known as OCD. Now, in order to properly understand OCD, we have to first understand its individual components. Obsessions are unwanted, constant thoughts that people have that can range anywhere from an obsession about cleaning germs to aggressive, constant thoughts aimed either at yourself or at others. Now, these obsessions manifest themselves externally as compulsions. So compulsions are the repetitive actions that stem from the obsessions. So for example, if your obsession is constant fear about germs, a compulsion from that may be constant cleaning around your house. A lot of characters on TV shows have what I'm going to refer to as conditional OCD. Other people have referred to this as depends on the writer OCD. It essentially means that a character's OCD varies depending on the needs of the storyline, depending on the needs of the writers, and the needs of the other characters. A really prime example of this is Monica from Friends. So, I figure I'll wash it, right? Monica, you got a bucket and some soap I can borrow? Oh yeah, I got, I got soap and sponges and rags and carnauba wax and polishing compound. <laughs> you don't even have a car. I know, but uh, one time there was this really dirty car parked in front of the building, so I, I washed it. And? And six others. There you are. In this particular episode, Monica is clearly OCD. She has an entire closet full of cleaning supplies from when she cleaned six cars outside her apartment. This is clearly a compulsion. However, in other episodes of Friends, Monica's OCD wavers a little bit. She sometimes lets things go or ignores things and other episodes would really bother her. Again, this is a prime example of conditional OCD or depending on the writer OCD. Over the course of this past week, I conducted a survey online to ask people if there were any shows or movies that they thought particularly represented mental illnesses in an accurate way. One show that had an overwhelming response in terms of OCD was the show Mr. Robot. The creator of this show has actually come forward and spoken openly about his childhood diagnosis with OCD. Another show that had a huge response was the show Glee. Emma's character on Glee demonstrates obsessive compulsive tendencies sort of right off the bat. We see her obsessively cleaning her office, she's clearly a germaphobe. However, as the series goes on, Emma actually proceeds to seek help for her disorder and engages in a lot of really interesting, eye-opening discussions about what it's like to live with OCD. This is how I am. This is who I'm supposed to be. Your illness is not who you're supposed to be. It's keeping you from who you're supposed to be. Look, you're a guidance counselor, right? So if a student came to you and said they had diabetes, would you give them insulin? Or would you say, hey, that's just who you're supposed to be? I... <clears throat> I just feel, um... I feel so ashamed. <laughs> it was also a really big deal for fans to hear a character describe themselves as obsessive-compulsive. This differentiates from a lot of other shows where a character might just display some comic tendencies of over-organization or even just saying, oh, I'm a neat freak. If you are interested in learning more about OCD or treatment of mental illness in the media, feel free to click the links in the description below, and I'll include some more information down there as well. I'm also going to include a link to my survey that I mentioned earlier. There are questions in there pertaining to the next few mental illnesses that I'll be discussing. So feel free to comment on those. Let me know if there's a show that you feel like does a particularly good job or maybe a show that makes you really mad and doesn't do a very good job at all. Either way, let me know and I'll see you next week when I cover the topic of representation of bipolar disorder. See you then.